After Ireland's defeat in Cardiff the previous night, England knew that a win in this game would seal the championship for the second year in a row, and it would also equal New Zealand's record of 18 straight victories. A win for Scotland would see them take their first triple crown since 1990, and the first success at Twickenham since 1983. But it was the home side who were quickest out of the traps. Scotland didn't do themselves any favours. With only two minutes gone, Fraser Brown was sent to the bin by referee Matthew Reynal for this mistimed tackle on Elliot Daly. Do top of the back, so yeah, no, top England of the back. made the Scots pay point. almost immediately. Yes. From the line-out, the English spread the ball to the left. Alex Dunbar allowed Jonathan Joseph run past him and clear. And Stuart Hogg couldn't get across on time. It was the perfect start for Eddie Jones' men. Owen Farrell was past fit to play, having missed training during the week. He put the conversion over for an early 7-0 lead. Two more penalties from Farrell left it at 13 points to nil before England struck in devastating style to notch their second try and put real daylight between themselves and the Scots. Farrell to Ford and on to Joseph who darted away for his and England's second try of the day. It was a knockout punch. The Bath centre having a wonderful afternoon. When Farrell added the extra two points, it was 20 nil. Scotland, who'd been so impressive against Ireland and Wales, looked shell-shocked, but they eventually got some sort of foothold in the game, approaching the half-hour mark, and Gordon Reid spotted the gap and slipped over the line for the Scots' first score of the game. At last, something for the Scottish supporters in the crowd to cheer. Finn Russell converted to leave it 20 points to seven. However, Vern Cotter's men couldn't build on that, Another Farrell penalty made it 23-7 before a third try just short of half-time put England comfortably ahead. Joseph again displaying wonderful running skills and with Bath teammate Anthony Watson on his shoulder in support, it was another try. Watson had come on as an early replacement for the injured Daly. This was a real blow for Scotland coming shortly before half-time. Farrell converted, it was 30 points to 7 at the interval. Devastating first half for England had rocked an injury hit Scotland and they picked up in the second period as they had finished the first. Just three minutes gone, a lovely pop pass from Youngs allowed Joseph running a wonderful line to cruise over for his third try of the game. It sealed the bonus point for England on what was turning out to be a special day for the number 13. Joseph and his amazing try scoring dream day. Another Farrell conversion left it 37 points to 7. Farrell tagged on another penalty and England hit the 40-point mark before the Scots got over for a second try of their own. Glasgow-bound centre Hugh Jones finishing off from close range. Russell scored a nice conversion but at 40 points to 14. This looks like damage limitation for the visitors. England were in rampant form, with the championship already in the bag, they could play with a bit of a swagger, and having missed much of the campaign through injury, substitute Billy Bunapola got in on the scoring act, driving over the line alongside Joe Launchbury, and the Scots had no answer. And Farrell put the conversion over, England had moved on to 47 points, which was already a record tally in a Calcutta Cup match, with a quarter of the game still to go. With just over 10 minutes remaining, Scotland got in for a third try, and again, Hugh Jones was the scorer. He's been playing for the Stormers in South Africa before his move to Glasgow next season, and he stormed over the line here despite the presence of plenty of players in white jerseys. His second and Scotland's third try, and suddenly a bonus point was a realistic hope for the Scots, 47-21 after Russell's conversion. The scoreboard operator was working overtime at Twickenham and after 72 minutes there was another try for the home supporters to celebrate. Substitute Danny Kerr off the line out and over the try line. The Harlequin scrum half celebrated his 30th birthday in January but he looked very sprightly getting in for England's sixth try of the evening. 
Farrell kicked a lovely conversion to leave it 54-21. The rout was complete with the final play of the game. A weary Scots defence couldn't cope when England pressed hard. Kerr was allowed a clear run to the line with the clock in the red. His finish with a flourish summed up the mood around Twickenham. Bunicola played his part with a clever pop pass to the try scorer. You could say it was a carefree finish from the scrum half. Farrell converted to leave a final scoreline of 61 points to 21. England match New Zealand's record of 18 test wins, a new record of 11 consecutive Six Nations wins, the Calcutta Cup and back-to-back -back championship successes. A good afternoon's work for Eddie Jones' men who face Ireland in Dublin for the Grand Slam. Scotland will complete their campaign away to Italy, looking to give departing coach Vern Cotter a happy send-off. This game was all about England. At Twickenham, it finished England 61, Scotland 21.